guys in the dark. I used to work in an institute for the developed disabled people. We were temporarily located to another building for remodeling of our building. Anyways, I was working one night. It was the second shift. We had a locked PETA unit. I saw one of the residents walking down the hall, very distinct, with a very distinct yellow t-shirt with a happy face on it. I went into the ward to let the staff know that they had an escapee. This was a serious situation because this particular resident, who was named Larry, would ingest absolutely anything from clothing to pens to belts to a bird's head. Ugh. Literally anything that he could grab. He was also very reluctant to go back to his home ward. That's why I didn't bring him back myself. He happened to need two escorts. When we got back into the hall, less than 15 seconds later, Larry was gone. We searched the entire building. Outside, downstairs, all the wards. He was nowhere to be found. This whole search lasted about 10 minutes because I had all extra staff looking for him. I was just about to call the house supervisor to let her know that we lost somebody when out of the bathroom walks Larry with one of the staff. He had been getting his bath in the bathroom for the last 30 minutes or so. It was kind of freaky. I absolutely, without a doubt, saw Larry in that hallway. I never would have short-staffed the wards like that if I hadn't seen him. Like I said, very distinctive. I took a lot of yelling that night. They all thought that I was crazy. Anyways, come to find out the very next day, after the story gets around that I'm crazy, Larry had an identical twin brother who died in that building ten years previously. Once when I was working in an LTC facility, I was walking down the hall, speaking to a CNA, when all of a sudden we heard the loud sound of water running in the bathroom. All the patients were in bed already, so I turned to her. Looked like, what the fuck is that? We walked down to the bathroom, which you could only enter by key. We unlocked the door and went in. The lights were out. We turned them on. The tub water was running full blast onto the tub. No one was in there. I walked over and turned the faucet all the way until the water had stopped running. I asked why the water was running. Everyone happens to be in bed. The CNA said strange stuff happens in that bathroom and on the floor all the time including the lights turning on and off, and stuff moving around or turning on in that particular bathroom. What was weird was I heard the water turn on as I was standing near the bathroom, and no one had walked in, and the handle had to be turned all the way to the right to turn it off. I was 14, and I'm female. I had to go to a hospital to get my spine fixed. Up until the day before all of this, I was in a wheelchair. I ditched my parents, and I enjoy walking while I could after the surgery. I was free for once in my life. I was wandering around the hospital, looking everywhere for nothing in particular, when suddenly I wandered near my room to see a middle-aged woman passed out on the floor. I got to one of the nearest people to come help me. They called a code blue. Since I was really into anything medical, I knew what a code blue was. I stood in shock as I watched the lady being shocked when I couldn't take it. I was watching some random lady being brought back from the dead. I found the cafeteria, got me a sandwich from the deli, and then sat at an empty seat. A twenty-something year old man sat down on the table, which I ignored him. He muttered to me that he was very thankful that I happened to find his wife. I flashed him a kind smile and continued eating. He touched my head. This got me creeped out. He said that I happened to have nice hair, and I told him to hold the fuck up. I squeezed his arm until he let go of me. I glared at him. That made him walk away from me. A few minutes happened to pass, and the guy was back with the same sandwich as me. He told me that the setup was not how he imagined our first date. I told him, hold up. You go around with other women while your wife happens to be in the hospital dying. That's it. I'm out of here, dude. I found a group of adults who I happen to know. I told them all about the situation that just happened. My dad was with the group, and they angrily stood up, went after the man, pushing him up against the wall, yelling at him in his face. My father's face turned red at that moment. The guy then tells my dad that he has a pretty girlfriend, referring to me. That pushed me over the line. I snapped at him. I told my dad to step aside. I gave that guy two black eyes, 
a bloody nose. My dad had never been prouder of me in all of his life. The past couple of years, I've been battling with mental illness, and as a result, I did a lot of self-harm, and even got to the point where I swallowed pills to kill myself a couple of times. But this is irrelevant. Due to the couple of times that I overdosed, my parents brought me to the hospital, where after being tortured with lots of IVs and medical attention for a couple of days, I was sent to what was basically a mental institution. For the record, this is nothing like you see in the movies, but some of the stories that I've heard from other teenagers that were in there. Before I start, I want to remind everybody that these are not any of my stories, and I'm retelling what was talked about when we had group therapy and what they said during the times that we had breaks. Names and details have been changed for privacy, of course. So, the first story. The name I'll use is Emma. Emma was quite unique and was super sweet. She was the first person to introduce herself to me after I was institutionalized for the first time. At first glance, she seemed like she didn't have a care in the world and didn't belong in this place. This was not the case, though. Emma revealed that there were two voices in her head. These voices would argue nonstop and would drive her insane. They would force her to make decisions that she did not want to make. Sleeping was the impossible due to how loud the two of them were. She told me that one of the voices was her friend, who had killed herself previously. These voices would also tell her evil things, such as to harm herself, kill herself, or other people, and so on. When she was put on medication to stop them, it only made them more angry, and made everything much worse. They would tell her things like she wasn't worth it, no one loves her, and that she should just die. It was horrible, and hearing the things that the doctor would tell her to cope made me want to cry for her. Doctors can be such assholes, especially doctors that work with mental illness. Please never try to put yourself in one of these mental facilities. They're horrible, and it's definitely not a game. These things are very real. But hey, Emma told me that the voices in her head liked me. That's not funny. I'm sorry. Now I'll only tell one more. This one was very scary. I'll call this girl Callie. Callie was a very hard ass at first glance. And honestly, for the first day, I was scared of her, even though she was a skinny, blonde-haired girl. But her story gives her an excuse to be scary. Apparently, what went down was in her home with her mother, father, and little brother. An armed man had broke in, ended up murdering both her parents right in front of her and her little brother's eyes. She was forced to stay with her aunt, her grandmother, and other family members who always seemed to neglect her, because no one wanted to deal with such a mess of a child. When she was living with her uncle, he physically and sexually abused her. For her to be able to trust anybody was impossible. Her pastor ended up stepping in and started to help take care of her. I'm pretty sure when I met her, she was living with her grandmother, but that was a year and a half ago. This all was life-changing for me. I have never been exposed to such evils in all of my life. It opened up my eyes, and it also changed me. I'm much more of an accepting person now taught me to never judge a person, because you don't know anything that is going on in their life. I'm sharing this only because I believe that people would enjoy hearing it. Mental illness is very real, and not a joke. I work at a Cincinnati Children's Hospital, and there's a little girl who appears at the bedside of dying children the day before they pass, and tells them that it's going to be okay. They even mentioned her as a household name in orientation. In Indy, at a children's hospital, we had a patient pass in surgery, but her room was haunted. A little African-American boy saw her one night and said that she looks like me and has one of these and one of these, pointing to a central line and GT. It also had a central line and GT. Here in CO, I just stayed at the Stanley Hotel. It's the hotel that inspired The Shining. Stephen King had stayed there and felt like his bartender was a ghost. Saw two little girls on the fourth floor when there were no other guests there. I woke up every 20 minutes to nothing and had a sock on my perfectly made bed and a luggage tag, an earring on my spotless bathroom. The next morning, I bought a book about the hotel hauntings and my hotel room happened to be in it. Apparently things go missing in one of the hotel rooms and show up later in my room. They also have a wounded veteran donated flag 
who has a spot that has started to fade into a silhouette of the original owner of the hotel. It's quite freaky if you ask me. Back when I was in PCA, I worked at Mercy Hospital in M.T. Airy, which is no longer there. We always had odd stuff happen, but the best one was one night when we got a random call up on my unit. I worked on the fifth floor. The other side happened to be oncology, from a room on the floor below us. The thing was, on the fourth floor, that side had been closed for a very long time, and there was no one down there. The other side was a small rehab unit. We had gotten this call. No one was in that room. So I and a few others go down to that side of the hall. We find the room, walk in to find that no one is there. It was being used for storage, and there was no call light or phone in that room. No one could even explain this. Other than that, we had call lights that would go off and on in one of the rooms. We just figured that it was a ghost. One more story, though. I'm sensitive to the paranormal. And not long after that, I started working there on nights. The elevator, nine times out of ten, would open up right as I was about to push the button. This happens a lot, and only to me. Every time I would step on and say thank you, ghost, for whoever is opening up the door for me. There are Navajo, Zuni, and Hopi natives that work and go to the GIMC hospital that I work at. Hear about the skinwalkers the most. Also, the floor that I worked on is haunted for sure. In one room, I heard computer keys typing. I was in the room alone, got up to see where the noise was coming from, and the noise just stopped. I sat down, and it started once again. I asked a co-worker. She freaked out and said yes. It happens to be an old co-worker who also did her homework for her masters in that room. She was killed in a freak car accident. Everyone seems to have heard the computer keys, and knew too, because I had said something another day about room 9, and they were like, oh man, it was her again? There are ghosts of little children, and a surgeon that roamed the floor, and moaning heard from room 5, and thought a patient was in the room one night, and no one was there. I was very freaked out about all of that. They have hired a native medicine man to come pray and make the floor safe. Also, a cup has moved three times in the apartment that we were in last. I swear. The husband said it. And I was like, that's a lie. Then he started recording. It did it once again. The counter happened to be dry. Something for sure is different on native land. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Like and hit the bell for notifications on future videos and become a stalker of the night and I'll see you next time.